Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video centered around a neutral flag CTF gameplay on the map Exile. We got matched up against a really good team, and we've actually faced this team before on Ragnarok, and they are very good. As you can see, Extinct has a 1.5 KD and over 134,000 kills. He's a, a CSR 50 and Sniper's Rumble Pit, Capture the Flag, and Big Team Battle. It is insanely hard to get a 50 and capture the flag, so that's amazing. Slobbish Mangoes is a 1.6 KD, over 77,000 kills in the game, a 50 in Rumble Pit and Big Team Battle. Slowin 1-1 is a 1.7 KD, over 72,000 kills, and a 50 in BTB. The Zookeeper is a 1.4 KD, over 127,000 kills, a 50 in Rumble Pit, Big Team Battle, and a 49 in CTF, also very noteworthy. Technicality has a 1.9 KD, just created his account, it's a very low rank, and he is over 2,000 kills, 999 assists, almost as many assists as his desk, has a 50 in Rumble and BDB already. Um, Technicality's profile just goes to show that even if you're a low SR or Spartan rank, that really doesn't mean anything, your KD um, gives away how good you are. So in this gameplay, it is very intense. If you're looking for a feel-good match, this is not it. I'll be pausing the gameplay and commenting on a few things as it progresses. It is a long video, so please look in the description for the timestamps in the directory that you can jump to if you want to watch just a specific portion of the video or jump straight to the gameplay. Enjoy. Okay, well, I'm going Banshee Window again. Um, if you, if you, you can go to the Gosshog and destroy that, that'd be nice. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna stay back with the light rifle most of the time this game. Well. Wait, Brissinger, push beam rifle with me. No, no, no. Well. No. Capture the flag. Need, no. Just go. We need to go for the flag. We really need to get I'm that gonna, flag. I'm just gonna look flag with the light rifle pretty much. First, I'm gonna. They went for beam. They went for beam. They're now, a few things to go over and note here. First of all is the position which I ran to. This is called Banshee Window, what I'm standing in right now. It is where the Sticky Death spawns, but in Big Team Battle, it's where the Banshee spawns, thus the name Banshee Window. Now, directly below me, under the bridge, is where the flag spawns in Neutral Flag. Um, past that, the structure just above my left hand is the Wreckage area. That is technically called that name because it's just a jumble of parts sort of thrown together. Um, so between Wreckage and Banshee Window below the bridge is where Flag spawns. Now, past that, on just to the left over there below the grenade indicator icon is a red player, and just to the right of that red player, as you can see, is the Goss Warthog. That is where the Goss Warthog spawns, except it has flipped over on its back, enabling people to get into it only after they have flipped over the Warthog onto its top like you see right there, the enemy players already have done that. Now, even past the Gauss Warthog, in that center rock base structure area, you have B Dominion Base. That's what it's called. Um, B Base is in Dominion. That's why it has that name. So, even further on past that is the cave where the tank used to spawn in Big Team Battle. It's now where the Mantis spawns in Big Team Battle, and that is where the Beam Rifle spawns. Now, what you want to be noticing here is in neutral flag, obviously how you run neutral flag is you go for the flag, pull it back to your base, wait for your other four teammates who don't have the flag to recontrol the area where the flag will respawn to, basically the middle of the map or on exile below this bridge. Wait till they have control of that area, cap, and immediately relay the next flag directly back to your base. But in Exile, as you can see, the power weapon positions like the Gauss Hog and the Beam Rifle are spread out across the map, making it interesting initial rushes. My team, I don't think really, and the players I've played with, really don't have a good rush opening strategy for this map, but I always go Sticky Debt, Banshee Window, because that's what I'm best at. Not getting the bike. Like Gauss, guys. We're not getting Gauss. Oh, I like there. Got double kill. One shot. One shot near the flag. One shot near the flag. Bossy is looking at him. Grab the flag. Hurry. Grab it. Grab it. Move it down. Oh gosh. We gotta get over there. Gravity. We gotta get over there. 
Look at B, look at B. Nice melt, dude. He thinks the point out here, a melt, like I just stated in the live commentary, is when you and another or multiple teammates shoot an enemy player with your normal loadout weapons and they die much faster than they normally would. It's great to team shot like this. It's very satisfying. The position I currently am in provides a great view of the top of the wreckage. And it's just a, pos a really underestimated position that I wanted to point out to you guys. This player is where he needs to be. And he's in a very powerful position that allows him to shoot our team without really receiving a whole lot of fire because of the slant that he's standing on. It's very easy to not be shot if they control B Dominion base to the left. Now, what I'd also like to point out is throughout this gameplay, for whatever freaking reason, I miss call out several things. For example, you're about to hear me say top middle, top middle. Top middle would be in the middle of B base. What I needed to say is there's a guy weak top wreckage, not top middle. Unfortunately, in this gameplay, I guess due to its intensity, I make enough incorrect callouts that I will be subtitling them along the bottom of the screen and telling you the correct callout that I should have said um, in purple text. Uh, top middle, top middle. I'm shooting top middle. Guys, we need to get this golf ball. Nice beam, nice beam. Well, I'm gonna grab and fight again. I'm gonna die, dude. I can't. I, I couldn't kill him. I couldn't kill him. Nice, good job. They're spawning left at the base. They know where you are, beam rifle guy. They know where you are. Okay, we need to go to the Banshee. Just keep shooting and keep shooting across map. They're going for the flag again. They're going for flag, they're going for flag. They picked it up. I'm gonna, I mean, I Banshee. I died Banshee. One, one shot there, Bonjai. Nice, good job. Bonsai in front of you, he dropped. Uh, okay. Hold on, stay here, stay in this position, stay alive. Now I want you guys to very clearly notice Bossius' friend, or his tag is Boss, defending the top wreckage. When you are fighting the enemies off, and you generally have control of Banshee Window and this side of the map that I'm currently on, the enemy team will spawn on the left side of their base. Similarly, if the enemy team has control of Banshee Window or the side I'm currently on, we, as in our team, will spawn on the right-hand side of our base, near the wall. This is very crucial to know because Bossy's friend is holding a very important position and shooting them off spawn, making it so where they can't get this flag into their base as quickly. This is great positioning and very worth pointing out. I'm trying, I can't kill him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no way. Bonsai right around the corner. Try to kill him. Try to kill that guy. Oh, he, 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 he choked the jump again. He choked the jump again. Be ready for a new flag. We all died. We all died. We all died. We have to respawn and get sent. He's going to cap it. He's going to cap it. Hold on. Now, I'd like to point out that we all died. That call it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone died, but it notifies Bossy's friend that he should back up, just as he does here on your screen. Unfortunately, I think that they're going to cap, so I drop ready for them to cap the flag so we can get it. Unfortunately, they don't, and Bossius ends up dying because I didn't stay up on Banshee Window. And even then, after missing a sticky day, I eventually do go back to Banshee Window, so that's kind of a wasted action on my part. He's in Banshee. I'm going to charge Banshee. Hold on. Be ready to cap it. Hold on. Hold on. Stay control. Keep control. One shot. One shot. Now, while previously to this moment I did 
do very well with Sticky Debt holding down Banshee and preventing them from pushing through that tunnel, as you could see there for quite some time. I did not need to try to push into the enemy base for this kill. We just need to wait for them to make a mistake. We don't need to push forward like this and lose the Sticky Detonator like I did in the situation. And I also want to notice how the flag carrier is actually the person who kills me. Just because you have the flag doesn't mean you can't do anything for your team. You have an infinite amount of ammo, so shoot long range as much as you can. It's flag, they have flag. If we can, if we can get a push here, hold on. Don't overextend too much. Yeah, but we're, he's not. They're waiting for us to make a mistake. They're waiting for us to make a mistake and die in this area. We need to help gravity. Our guy just got annihilated from the side here. Remember how I said just now that gravity died in the center wreckage, most likely from B Dominion base. What I want you to notice is that the person in front of me who just grenaded me is the zookeeper. He is not extinct, the person who killed me. Extinct is the same person who killed Gravity in the center wreckage. He shot me from behind right as I was naded. Once again, the top wreckage central area is extremely important to hold because it provides you a wide variety of cover, allows you to look at multiple angles and surprise people like this. Having known that Gravity died, I should not have tried to push this guy who just grenaded me. I should have backed into the tunnel and it back into Banshee window. I died, I died. Wow, there's a fail. They have beam, they have beam and B, they have beam and B. They have beam and B, they have beam and B. He's on the record. Yeah, I'm sorry. That is correct. Now it is worthy of note that the use of the bolt shot I perform here for the double kill is literally how you want to be using the bolt shot and one of the main reasons why I load out with it as my secondary. Unless you're getting raped by vehicles and you want to get a plaza pistol out to start stunning some of them like a mantis or something, you want to be loading out with the bolt shot because it comes in very handy at specific circumstances like this. I do not encourage camping around corners with the bolt shot. That's not what it's for. You shouldn't use it like a primary weapon. You should use it to jump out and surprise people when you're weak and they're chasing you around corners like this. Basically, any of my kills with the bolt shot I get in this game are great examples of this sort of general tactic. Got him. Nice. Good job. Hey, get the flag. Get the flag. Get the flag. Get the flag. Need help. Need help. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Attack these guys. Hey, it's to get out of the get, get out. Get out of the tunnel. Get out of the tunnel. Enemy flag. Boss is in fire. You need to look Enemy at the flight carrier. Nice. Fire fire try to stay alive. Don't cap. Whatever you do, I holy crud, don't cap. I'm being shot. shot uh, gravity, try to get up there and then drop if you can and try to attack them. Never mind. I have you. I'm behind you. I have your help, Gravity. I have your help, Gravity. That's okay. I need help with Banshee. There's two Banshee window right now. Two Banshee window right now dropping. I need help. One shot. Okay, yeah. can't out BR that guy. I just can't do it. We need to get out of our base and recontrol center. These guys coming to our base are weak. They're weak. Now the following tip is beyond important. Okay, When the enemy is pushing you from Banshee window to my left currently, okay, when they're pushing you from that side, where did I say we would spawn? Close to the beginning of this film. Do you remember? I said we'd spawn on the right-hand side of our base. Literally right now to the right of my character along the flat wall on the right hand side of our base when you're facing it like I am right now. So, where does the flag carrier need to go to stay alive for the longest period of time? The flag carrier, as you can see right now, is in the left hand portion of our base. This is incorrect. The flag carrier, as our teammates die, needs to push more to the right hand side of our base so that he and the flag, if he dies, will be closer 
to our teammates who are spawning on the right hand side of our base. Once the flag carrier sees a bunch of red dots on his radar, he should immediately go onto the top roof of our building using the ramp inside our base and stay on that general roof area for as long as he can. And if he dies, try to jump and throw the flag out of the right hand side of our base for us who are respawning. As it is, my teammates don't know that, and so they end up sticking around the left-hand side trying to stay alive, and the enemy team ends up pulling the flag. The guys coming to our base are weak. They're gonna get Goss. They're gonna get Goss. And they Goss. I did. Guys, we just failed. Okay, come on. Oh, one shot. Gunner. We need to get over there now. Okay, whoever is spawning behind me, like, come on. Alex, try to get over there. I'm, I'm gonna do with you, Alex. Go, Alex. Go, Alex. Okay, wow. Guys, we've got, we have to go to Banshee. We have to go Banshee. Re reconfigure here. I'm there. I'm at Banshee and I have the stupid B, B, there B. We need it, we need Bonsai, get over here. Now I want you to notice right here where I aim my center targeting reticle. When someone is gunning the Goss Hog, you can still hit the very top of their head. And if you aim where I am about to aim in the video, you can pretty easily pull off the kill if you're accurate. Please keep in mind that even if you're not hitting the person gunning the hog and you're still hitting the hog, that still does some mild amount of damage to the players in the vehicle. It is important to note this because oftentimes players will just shoot the side of the hog or not shoot in the correct way. This literally defines how you need to shoot the Goss Hog. And it also renders the Goss Hog very useless against a team of very, very powerful BR players because of kills like this that I perform in the game. Shoot the, the Goss, the Goss, I got him, I killed the Goss Gunner. Boss, just try to kill that guy. Okay, fire just died in Banshee, fire just died in Banshee. They're gonna cap, they're gonna cap. We're not anywhere near you, man. Nice, nice help there. Oh my god, I got ghost. We're gonna have to make a push. This guy below you is really weak. Oh, he came in Fire. Banshee with the ghost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's not. We good job uh doing that though. They have a gun gunner again. Okay, I need to get my I'm gonna charge their flight carry while they're running around the Goss Hog. Hold on. I dot wow. Because they're on the Goss Hog. We've got to hold, hold B, hold B, Alex. You need to come a little bit more towards. Okay, never mind. You're good. In case you are unaware or you are curious, I am loading out with mobility and ammo. Ammo because I would have run out of ammo already several times in the game if I hadn't been loading out with it. And mobility because, as you're seeing right now, I have to sprint from a spawn against the wall along a very big map. So it helps me get across the map faster after dying. We need to get closer to the base. Gunner weak on Gossog. Gunner still weak on Gossog. Gunner, I kill him. I'm going for their hog. Hold on. I have two guys. I have two guys in in front. Wow, I'm gonna die. Yeah, yeah. I put shots on one. Three. I'm not. I'm not lifting up. I'm not lifting up. Watching you. Bonds, I keep, I'm keep watching. I'm, I'm keeping them 
I died from their window, yeah. One shot there behind that rock. We're over it. We're extending a little we're extending a little too far, guys. Hold on. We don't have control banshee anymore. There's two guys charging middle. Okay, that golf solid is just being a pain, trying. We can kill him a little bit, be great, so we can't get a new gun. He just did. B, B, he's he's weak at B. He's insanely weak at B. They're weak at weak at B. I don't see him. He's weak again, weak again, insanely weak at B. Pull, pull to our, pull to our back to our base. Pull to our, back to our base. Kill B, key B. No, they're not. They're not about to cap. Our flight carrier has the flag. Good try, flight carrier. Guys, let's go. Now, once again here, I'd like to reinstate the importance of shooting the gunner off of the Goss Hog. Because the Goss Hog drove from our side of the map back to their base to kill both me and our flag runner, it is of my opinion that we could have done a better job of shooting the Goss Hog Gunner as I've done twice already in this film, um, BRing him quite easily off of his gunning position. Now of course I don't know what positions my teammates were in, but it's very crucial to take down that Hog Gunner as soon as you see him. It's just like shooting a Mantis and keeping the Mantis weak on Ragnarok. You have to constantly be putting your fire into it if you're not shooting something else. And that would have probably led us to capping that flag, but unfortunately we got stopped by that Goss Hog. Help. We're, we are not focusing up on Goss Hog. I just got run over by the Goss Hog. Guys, we're not. Okay. Good job, Reddy. I killed the Goss. I don't know what happened there. Guys, come on. Let's form up again and run through this. We gotta push their base. They're gonna have a Goss Hog again. In front of their base, very weak, in front of the base. I killed their I killed their I killed their driver. Let's push in, push in, push in. Oh, oh. Come on, let's go. Nice long range shots with that. Nice long range shots with that. I one shot you know, guy, boss just in fire, push up. Okay, we don't have control of the central place anymore. Please understand that in neutral flag, it can divulge into a very complex battle between whether we are supposed to guard the center of the map and wait for the enemy team to cap it when they shouldn't, so that we'll be ready for the flag when it resets, or should we push into the enemy base and try to get the flag out of their base before they can cap it, or maybe even push them enough to where they actually feel like they actually need to cap the flag. And this is really a hard strategy to mediate between. And the main thing I have to say here is that at least one person should be more towards the flag um, than no one at all. As you can see right here, that person happens to be me. I recognize that no one is near or even remotely close to the flag spawn. And so I decide to push over there and generally hold that location in case the enemy team decides to capture the flag. I got, the, I got the carrier. He's down, he's down, he's down. Find the right the base. Pull, pull it, pull it. Keep moving, keep moving it. I just one shot. Come on, guys. Alex, try to get in there, can you? This guy's weak. Okay. Wow, fire. fire, 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 you're way overextending, dude. I'm way. Maybe. We keep dying. So in previous Capture the Flag games on Exile, I've already mentioned this, but I'll reinforce it. Running through the Banshee Tunnels is the safest way to get the flag back to your base, regardless of whether you're red or blue team. Unfortunately, my teammate decides to take the enemy flag straight out of their base towards the center of the map. And this, there's multiple reasons why you don't do this, but the main one is it encourages split spawning. Once you vacate the enemy base, or the sides of their base, and you don't have teammate support on the direct sides of the enemy base, left or right, it encourages split spawning. And split spawning is when the team that you're facing spawns on the left and right hand sides of their base, making it almost impossible because to pull a flag out of their base because it's almost impossible to 
cover two angles at once. This is why if our flag carrier had run instead through the enemy base and run the route directly below my grenade indicator icon on the top left of the screen there below the red flag icon, if he had run it through that area, the enemy team wouldn't have been able to spawn on the right hand side of their base because he would have been standing there. That is why you run it along the edge of the map because you're effectively blocking spawns for the enemy team and forcing the enemy team to only spawn in one direction. This allows you to protect your flag carrier much easier. Got in front of the base, weak. Got in front of the base, absolute. I know, oh, I couldn't do it. Guys, come on. They're light rifling to the left of their base. They're light rifling to the left of the base. We need to pick up this to get. They cap, they cap, they cap, they cap. Go, 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 go. Everyone form up with me. Everyone form up with me. Stay in center. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm holding. I'm about to die. Fire and uh, Alex, you gotta help me here, dude. I put shots. Dude, 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 you have to help me here. I'm, I got beamed. I got beamed. Focus on the guys in the center. Focus on the guys in the center. There's a guy curving around about to grab the flag. He's gonna grab the flag. This is a long range battle here, guys. They're gonna grab the flag. Alex, it's you. That's all you, man. Guys, get over there. Okay. The flag carrier is one shot. He's one. Come on, you guys. He's one shot. I put him. He's absolute one. Everyone charge to the left. Everyone charge left to their base. Everyone charge left to their base. All the way to the left. Charge straight to their base. Now, why in the world would I say everyone charge left to the enemy base? Well, when you're loading out with mobility and able to sprint infinitely across the map, we know that the enemy team is going to pull the flag back to their base through Banshee. They're covered in the tunnel. We're, we spawn the left side of our base. We're not going to be able to get there in time to stop him. But if we all go to the left at this moment and go into the left side of the enemy base, we can stop the flag carrier before he caps the flag, kill him, and move the flag back to Banshee while the enemy team spawns directly in front of where my character is right now to the left side of their base. Um, this doesn't end up occurring in the way I would have liked it to, but nonetheless, notice how I force the enemy flag carrier to cap the flag because he believes he is about to die and does. Uh, I do actually end up killing him. I'm dead serious. O okay, if you guys could all get over here, we might be able to stop this flag carrier. There's a beam rifle that's bunch of spawn. Everyone go to the left. Everyone go to the left. I'm going to camp and kill this flag carrier. Hold on, everyone go to the left. Oh, he capped it, he capped it, it's in the center of the map. Grab, grab this flag. Grab the flag, move it back to our base, and don't die, holy frag. Like, shoot the guys in the center, okay? Shoot the guys in the center, uh, hold control of center here. As soon as you get back there, don't cap it, well, okay. Just like drag, drag gonna one shot, drag gonna one shot. Oh. Just like gonna one shot. You have to, yeah, you have to go back to our base to re, re get that flag. Right, shoot the, the goshawk, shoot their goshawk. Gunner's weak, gunner insanely weak, gunner insanely weak on the goshawk. Nice. Push the B, push the B right now. I'm weak at B, like he's right there, nice. Another shot, one shot B. One shot B. Cap now, cap now, cap now, cap now, cap now. Go, 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 go. They're gonna be all B, they're gonna be all B. Dude, like. They're, I got double kill, double kill, double kill. Double kill. Overkill. I'm pulling a flag, I'm pulling the flag Banshee, I'm pulling the flag Banshee. Help me, help me, help me, help me. I'm waiting for our shields to regenerate. Hold B, everyone just needs to hold B. Just hold B. Hold central, we have a minute and 33 seconds. We gotta get another flag cap. Hold B. There's a guy curving around. Guys, look, look to the far base. There's a guy curving around about to try to attack me. He's there, I'm ready. 
I'm ready. Cap it. Hold on, hold on. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. There's a guy in our base. Oh my gosh, there's a guy in our base. Hold on. I'm not. I capped it. I capped it. I capped it. They're three in our base. Three in our base. Three in our base right now. Three in our base right now. I'm coming to our base, but I can't. Three in our base. Three in our base. Everyone go back to our base. Everyone back to the base. We can swarm them. Now it is worth breaking down in some extensive detail the situation we currently find ourselves in in this very intense Capture the Flag film. So bear with me. I just capped a flag in our base. There's almost a minute left to go in the game, and I found three enemy players in our base, and none of them are weak, and they're basically going for the flag that our teammate just relayed halfway back to our base. Great job on his part. You can see his red X there as he gets cleaned up by three enemy players exiting the left-hand side of our base to engage the flag and try to pull it back to their base. I'd like to point out that what the enemy team did, pushing three players into our base from the very far left side of the map, is exactly what I was hoping we and my team could do earlier in the film, where I was describing why I loaded out with mobility, how you can sprint infinitely from the side into the enemy team's base and stop a flag cap. This is how you do it, and the enemy team pulls it off perfectly. If we were to successfully pull off this flag cap and tie the game, if we were able to tie the game 3-3, would have gone into overtime of two minutes. Here is how we could have, or might have, successfully done so. We only have four players alive. The enemy team has at least five players alive because we see three players in our base. The kill feed is only showing that the player who had the flag, uh, mainly Brissinger, um, just died. This means at least two other enemy players are alive and on the map. Alex, i.e. Gravity Ninja on the left-hand side of your screen, who's in the center wreckage slash Dominion B base area, is the one who's going to have the most sight range on these players. He needs to call them out and receive support from Bossius friend, possibly killing one or two of them off. Maybe not both, because obviously Bossius friend is going to have three players charging him with the flag, but Alex also, while doing this, needs to push back through wreckage, but stay in wreckage. He does not need to go to the flag. And this is the actual problem, and what actually ends up occurring that is wrong, is that both Alex and Boss's friend push all the way back to our flag. And I want you to notice this very carefully, how because they push back to the flag, they get killed prematurely allowing the two other enemy players who we didn't know their location to shoot us from behind as we're trying to kill off these players grabbing our flag. Alex and Bossy's friend needed to maintain their position, not necessarily push back towards the flag, but stay alive and maintain their position. Um, me spawning at our base, I really couldn't do much because none of the players in the center of the map had been killed off yet, so I just sort of got annihilated here. I hope you guys enjoyed this film and understood and how to play, you know, neutral flag better, and I'll see you in the stats screen after the game is over. Bossius, this is you. Oh, so Bossius, this is you. Right this is 100% you. You have to hold this position. One shot. They're both one shot. Bossius. We can still do this. Still do this. Got this like here. Right there, dude. Right fire. Put. Wow. I just spawned. I okay. Why do I still have that? Good try, guys. Good try. We tried. If we would have gotten that flag, we could have tied it and gone into overtime, but that's it, so. I'm gonna... It's more than that. It's more than that. Good game, guys. We tried. We gave them a run for the money. That's for darn sure. So, seeing as this was a very tough game, I want to give a brief shout out to my teammates, Gravity Ninja. It's Bonsai Four, Bossius Friend, and Brissinger Eight. Um, overall, performing pretty well, considering we were facing very good enemy players who had probably been playing for a very long time. I do have a 48 in Capture the Flag, and as two of the enemy players had higher than that, I would like to mention that. 
there are less than 100 people who currently have uh, 48 or above in Capture the Flag. Um, it's pretty astounding, and um, just for the odds that we went against, I think we did okay. I hope this film is useful to not only my teammates, but for those of you who are watching on YouTube, um, thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped you out in some way, um, understanding this game type and map better. Um, subscribe, um, like for future Halo slash Destiny, possibly Titanfall content as well, and I'll see you in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.